Hi everyone, good to be back with you this time. The last time we were together, I, I talked about a particular part in our worship services called Confession and Absolution or Confession and Forgiveness. Today I want to talk a little bit about another part of our worship service that we use every week, and that's called Passing the Peace. You may remember that at the beginning of the service, uh, Pastor Cordy or myself uh, passed the peace to all of you, saying, uh, may the peace of our Lord be with you. And you reply, and also with you. And then we encourage you to go pass the peace or share the peace with one another, and it depends on what service you go to. Sometimes that's a little less formal than others. Sometimes we shake hands, other services we give high fives. During flu season, we touch elbows <laughs> so that we don't pass on our germs. However you do it, um, it's an important piece of our worship time together. And uh, that time is traditionally meant, it's not, not a time of welcome to say, hey, you know, glad you're here and, and uh, you know, here, and welcome to this place. But it, it, it's really meant to, to be a place of reconciliation between us as members in the body of Christ. I don't know about you, but um, there, there are times when I let down my brothers and sisters in Christ. And there are times that my brothers and sisters in Christ let me down. I remember years ago and, and my friend Eric, we were both working in youth ministry and we had a different approach to the way we were going to handle that particular night with our high schoolers. Both of us were tired, both had worked a full day, and uh, well, to be quite honest, our interaction didn't go very well. We ended up getting hot and heated and, and angry at each other, and, and I said some words that I didn't mean, and in a way that I didn't mean them. And well, he got defensive and reciprocated. That happens in families, and it happens in our work or in schools, it happens in the Church of Christ. Why? Because we're human. So what do we do when we let each other down? What do we do when there's need for reconciliation in a broken relationship? Well, we pass the peace is what we do. Passing the peace is that that moment in our worship service together that we go up to each other and maybe it's not with our words so much as speaking with our hearts we're saying I love you and I forgive you and peace be with you so how do we do that in a, in a more deliberate and intentional way within the church well if, if you have a pen and paper you can write this down uh, if you don't you can probably memorize these four little tips or tricks, uh, steps if you will, um, or you can always replay this <laughs> anytime that you want. For reconciliation, our first step is to commit to working on our broken relationships. And I tell you what, that's really hard work. In fact, most of the world around us, they don't even care about broken relationships. And if we're being honest, Neither do people in the church. Broken relationships happen, and usually we run away from those. But in our text today, Philippians chapter 4, Paul writes to um, probably, uh, I, I'm not sure who's the leader here, it's probably uh, one of his uh, apprentices. Um, maybe it's Timothy, maybe it's Titus, uh, we're not sure. Um, but he writes to the church at Philippi, Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, dear friends. In verse 2 then in chapter 4, he says, I plead with Euodia and I plead with Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Philippians 4.2 holds out these two ladies to come together to reconcile. And this is, is important enough for Paul to put into a letter that will be read in front of the congregation. Can you imagine that now all of a sudden your dispute with someone else is coming to the whole congregation? I think Paul does this to encourage their reconciliation because he knows 
broken relationships in the church are not healthy or helpful. And then in verse 3, he encourages um, uh, Timothy, we think. Yes, he says, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. And so Paul encourages uh, the overseer, the deacons, his friends here in Philippi. Um, might even be a, a woman, might be Lydia, who knows. But he says, help them, these two, Yodia and Syntyche, to come together and reconcile if they need help. And so get help if you need it. But commit to that first step to working out your broken relationship. And I'm might encourage you to note Matthew chapter 18 and verse 15 and follow, following where Jesus gives us kind of a, a process to do that. Number two, if you're committed to working this out, admit your fault. Again, a, a few days ago, I talked to you about our sin and, and many in the world and even in the church are just not really self-aware. Uh, they don't admit their faults very often or their sins. And I don't mean here apologizing around the edges. We're really good at that, aren't we? Listen to these and tell me if these are apologies. I'm sorry you're hurt. Or this one. I'm sorry things went badly. Are those apologies? They're really not. There's no fault that's taken on by the one who's proclaiming these words. Apologies go like this instead. I'm sorry I hurt you. Or, I'm sorry I acted badly. Those are apologies. The other two, not so much. So we don't want to apologize around the edges. We want to take responsibility for our fault in that broken relationship. Number three, receive the other's apology. Don't harbor bit bitterness. There's a couple in the church I grew up in. Uh, actually, it was a, a, a man on one side and, and a woman on the other who served on a particular church board. I, I can't remember what it is. They got into an argument one time years ago, and for always and forever, he sat on the left side of the church, she sat on the, the right side of the church, and the two would never meet. <laughs> I asked my parents about this relationship and said, well, they've probably forgotten what they were arguing over, but there was no loss of love between the two. Don't allow that to happen in your relationships here. So commit to working out your brokenness through reconciliation. Admit your fault and really take responsibility. Receive the other's apology and then lastly, intentionally move on in Christ Jesus and with his help. That's an important piece. We can't stay here in the mire and the muck and the messiness of broken relationships. We have to allow Christ to help us move on with each other. So, this next Sunday, when you're worshiping, whether at 8.30, 11, or at five o'clock, keep in mind this important piece of our worship together, the passing of the peace. And if there's someone you need to go up to, there's someone you need to say, I, I, I'm sorry to, if there's someone in the congregation that you just need to tell them, no matter what, I love you. Use this time to do it and simply say, the peace of the Lord be with you. Amen. Let's pray. Lord Christ, we do pray that you would mend and reconcile our relationships in the church. Um, there's no room for brokenness and bitterness in this, your family. So guide us, help us to do this hard work, to admit our own faults, uh, to work together in, in love and a spirit of love and, and reconciliation, uh, to receive one another, Lord, um, when we wrong each other, and then really trust you in moving forward in our relationships. For this is for your honor and for your glory alone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.